if you're taking a quiz on what's the type, what's the ideal relationship you want to be in, and, and it's multiple choice, and one of those multiple choice questions tells you sharing my partner with someone else, pretty sure none of you will check that box off. Yo, what's up warriors? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. This is an anti-narcissist community and I am a toxic relationship coach. My name is Kita. If this is your first time in the channel, I invite you guys to subscribe. You may find the answers you've been looking for about your toxic entanglement and why it is that you have anxiety, PTSD, panic attacks, and all sorts of um, uncomfortable feelings around your romantic partner. Quick video today, I wanna touch up on the subject of triangulation. That's right, narcissist triangulation. This is a tactic that narcissists, uh, psychopaths, toxic people use to put themselves in a position of power and have total control in a relationship of uh, more than one person. That's right, think of it as a threesome. And it's not one of those exciting threesomes like in your fantasies. No, this is a situation where there's two people. You, the other person, and the narcissist. Who's the other person? Well, the person they're cheating on you with, the person they're comparing you to. This is the person that they claim is just a friend. This is a person that they claim that they're only helping through a rough time, a rough patch that they're going through and they need to be there. Maybe they have a drug addiction or something like that and, and you start finding clues and evidence. They're always talking, they're always chatting, you see text messages coming in all the time and you have that intuition in the pit of your gut that's telling you this is something more. I'm sure a lot of you have been in this situation. It's not fun or funny, okay? But it's something that a lot of toxic people do. And you have to think of it this way. Narcissists are as, as intelligent as they can be. They're pretty much dead inside. They're empty inside. They're never satisfied. They have this constant thirst for narcissistic supply that can never be quenched. They can never find fulfillment. Not in you, not in the other person they're cheating on you with, not in anybody. This is why they do the things that they do. They get bored and then they gravitate towards the next shiny object. So you wonder how the narcissist maintains control in a situation like this. Well, after the narcissist has intoxicated you through the love bombing, an idealization phase that you go through at the beginning of the entanglement. Once you're addicted to them and you start noticing that they're slowly pulling away, you desperately crave the person that they showed you at the beginning of the relationship. Now remember, at the beginning they were wearing a mask and they mirrored you. They learned things about you, they learned the things that you had passion for, the goals that you had, the things that you would tell them that, that you hope and long to be or to have into your life, they became exactly that. They became your soulmate. And now you're starting to notice that they're pulling layers away. They're taking away that attention. They're taking away that drug, so to speak, that you're so hooked on. Enter the other person, okay? Now, as the problems in your relationship start to blow up, this other person always seems to pop up somehow. And as the months go by, you start realizing, well, this is more than a friend. Now they start revealing more clues that this person confessed their feelings for them. Now you start getting jealous. And as you start getting jealous, you start to double down or triple down on doing things for them in hopes that you'll win their love back or, or win their loyalty back. Okay, and this is exactly where the narcissist wants to be because on one hand they have you um, starving for the breadcrumbs that they're throwing at you at this point and at the same time you know there's another person that they're probably sleeping with already and you're waking up with all this anxiety thinking not, not only just afraid of losing your relationship which would be a blessing if you did trust me but not only that but you're afraid of losing to this other person who does not even know that you exist, okay? It may not be the right time for the narcissist to reveal to this other person who you are. 
Because remember, the narcissist only tells you what they want you to know. Think about that for a second. You think that the other person in this triangle knows that your partner is in a relationship with you, but they don't. Because the narcissist is probably grooming that person right now. The narcissist is making up stories. The narcissist is probably telling them, oh, my ex is crazy and they won't stop calling me. I'm so glad I have a connection with you. Like, I, I feel that you understand me. So this other person is excited about getting to know your partner and starts dating them. All this is being done behind your back. Depending on how much of a detective you are, depending on how much, um, you're, how far you're willing to go to uncover the truth, then that's when shit starts hitting the fan. Okay, that's when all bets are off and all of a sudden this person that was just a friend, that was just someone that they knew at work, that they had a connection with, this person is equal to you and they'll flat out tell you and have a connection with both of you. <laughs> I, have an emo <laughs> I have an emotional connection with both of you. Listen, listen to that bullshit. Have an emotional connection with both of you. How in the hell... Can you develop an emotional connection with someone else when you're supposedly in a solid, committed relationship with you? How in the hell are they supposed to do that? Because they're cheating on you. Hello. Otherwise, it's impossible to develop such an intimate, com intimate, intimate connection with someone else. When you're in a solid, stable trustworthy relationship you do not entertain another person to come into your life you do not start giving out your phone number to people that are potentially interested in dating you you don't do those things you have your boundaries You're like hey i have a boyfriend hey i have a girlfriend hey i'm married you don't do that shit only promiscuous toxic people start flirting and entertaining other people into their life that gets in between the relationship because they are unfulfilled. They can, never, they can never find fulfillment. Okay? You are just a source of supply for them. This other person is another source of supply for them. None of you, not you or the other person, can ever fill the narcissist. It's never enough. As a matter of fact, the thrill of knowing that they're triangulating two people is another source of narcissistic supply. And they love it. Even if they know and they're fully aware that that's a horrible thing to do, they just can't stop. They just can't stop. All they got to do is just be honest and cut one of them off. But they can't stop. So now, if you have any sort of dignity, any sort of self-respect, and you realize that this is happening, that you're being compared, that you're in competition with another person that's not sitting in the room right now, having a three-way conversation, the three of you, hey, by the way, I'm going to share the narcissist with you. On Mondays and Wednesdays, I have them between 5 o'clock and 10 o'clock, okay? On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have them, and every other, every other weekend, we rotate, just like, child, just like when, you're, when you split child custody, right? But the third person is never in that table. You can never, goddamn notifications. You can never have a conversation with the other person because the other person has already been um, groomed. There's been a smear campaign done. The other person thinks you're a monster. The other person thinks you're crazy. The other person thinks you're abusing the narcissist. The other person doesn't know that the narcissist is a narcissist yet. You only know what the narcissist tells you. That's all you know. Okay? Do not give them any credit. Do not give them the benefit of, of the doubt. Once you start seeing the red flags, once you start noticing your gut and your soul is screaming at you, letting you know that something's wrong, once you start talking to your friends, hey, so this is other person, and your friends tell you, what, what? There's another person, they're, they're cheating, like, why, why, why are you trying to make that work? This person is already unfaithful, they can't be trusted. You have, to, you have to end it, you have to cut ties, you have to cut your losses and go. Someone with strong boundaries will automatically, immediately, Cut their losses and go. You're not going to put up with that. Is that your ideal relationship that you fantasized when you were younger? To have someone that was going to be lying and cheating on you behind your back? 
and then triangulating you and comparing you to this other person. Oh, this other person gives me all the support. They give me all the stability. This other person understands me. That's a devaluation to you. So now, now you don't understand them anymore. But remember when you were the only one that understood them? Remember that? But suddenly the other person understands them. That means you don't. The other person will give me all the time I need to gather my thoughts and, and time to myself. You know, that, that, that's pretty much telling you, hey, you got to step up to the plate and give me the time that I need. Give me the space. You guys know what happens when, you, <laughs> when the narcissist asks for space, right? They're, they go straight to the other person. It's just manipulation and a trick to get you out of the way temporarily. Okay? But they will tell you what the other person's doing because psychologically it's a trick. Subconsciously they are hypnotizing you to make you want to, again, step up to the plate and do what the other person is doing better. That's what they want you to do. Oh, this other person cut me a check for $1,000 because I'm struggling. They want you to cut them a check for $2,000. Now, oh, he's got you there, I got you there. Oh, this other person cooks for me and, and does this for me and nurtures me. Oh, okay, that's what she's doing? Okay, watch. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to show you what a good woman I can be. And there, out comes the caretaking behavior. Out comes that codependency. When really, what you need to look at is the fact that they have someone else on the side. Either they're on the side or you're on the side. But you're caught up in a toxic triangle. This is narcissistic triangulation. It's not only done in romantic relationships, but it's also done in, in other relationships where two other parties look towards the narcissist for answers. Like it, it, They're kind of like in the middle. They, they're playing that middle man, right? They're, mid, they're playing that middle person, and they pit the other two people against each other. That's what it is. They are on the top of the triangle, and then the other two, piece, the other two people are on the side. They turn to them for answers. They question them. They ask them the questions. The narcissist tells this person, oh, th this person said this about you, or this person's doing this, and then they tell this person something else, and now they're both pitted against each other. They're enemies. They don't even know each other, and they hate each other, when really, you need to hate the narcissist. If there's any hate here, you got to hate the prince of darkness, or the queen of darkness, the succubus. That's who you got to hate. That's who you got to get angry at. That's who you got to be like, oh, wait a second. I'm on to you. You're scamming both of us. You are finessing the both of us. That's what's really going on. These toxic narcissists, through triangulation, make these two innocent people suffer. These two people, all they want is to have a stable relationship. That's all they're, that's all they're looking for. They want honesty. They want trust. They want love, genuine love. But instead, they're getting this trick. They're getting this finessing that's going on that's unhealthy nobody wants to be in that situation and the reason you're caught up in it is because the intoxication of being entangled with a narcissist goes far it goes deep it goes really really deep it's a psychological trick okay logically you would not stand for this if this was written on paper and you would read it you'd be like hell no I don't want any part of this. If you're taking a quiz on what's the type, what's the ideal relationship you want to be in, and, and it's multiple choice, and one of those multiple choice questions tells you sharing my partner with someone else, pretty sure none of you will check that box off. Okay? So come on, guys. It's time to put the blame where the blame belongs. Stop competing with another person. If you find yourself caught in a love triangle, it's time to cut your losses and go. Let them have each other. I promise you it's not going to work out. You're afraid that the narcissist is going to pick the other person and walk off into the sunset happily ever after. You know what's going to happen? Yes, they are going to get with them. Chances are they're already in a relationship right now behind your back. They are going to choose them. They're not going to choose you. They're going to choose them. You know why? Because you're giving them a hard time. You're creating narcissistic injuries. Okay? You're making it very difficult for them to continue finessing the both of you. This other person has no clue, so it's easier to go to that person. But they're not going to find fulfillment. That's going to fall apart immediately.
Give it a year. Give it six months. Give it a few months. They're going to fuck it up. And they're going to come and hoover you. They're going to realize what they lost. But then it's going to be too late. And good for you if you don't take them back. Good for you if you put up your boundaries. Good for you if you call them out and you tell them, hey, you know what? By not choosing me, you chose them. Now go fuck yourself. Have a nice life. That's how you get your power back. Okay? That's how you get control of your life back. That's how you get your self-esteem and your self-worth back. Remember, anyone that's in a relationship and they break up for whatever reason and they immediately jump into another relationship, that person is not healthy. That person has demons. That person cannot be alone. That person is running towards the next rebound as fast as they can because they cannot face themselves. Okay? If anyone, if your ex immediately jumped into a new relationship when they ended things with you, remember, they were already cheating behind your back because no one can just get into a relationship that fast unless they're doing something behind your back, unless they already were getting to know someone and messing around and had something going on. When you go through a breakup, you need time for yourself to heal. You do not just jump into something else. So if your ex is with someone else right now, I don't care what they put on social media. And I don't care what they post. I don't care what they tell you. Okay? That new relationship is not going to work out the way you think. And even if it does, remember, you only know what they tell you or what they post out there. You don't know what's really going on. They chose them for a reason. If it was a girl, most likely it was some false hypergamy that she fell, that she fell into a trap for. Okay, and if it's a dude, he chose the prettiest, the, the, a prettier girl or a younger girl or some shit like that. Okay, but none of them took the time to be by themselves, to heal, to get some things accomplished in their life, to get their life figured out, to realize why they were entangled in some toxic shit, right? No, they jumped into something new. Let them go. You don't need that shit. You know it. You know it. Just got to trump those emotions is what you got to do. And I can help you do that if you'd like to work directly with me. I do have an online coaching program where we do counseling, mentoring calls over Zoom. If you'd like more information on that, click the link below in the description. I'll send you more details on how we can set something up and start workshopping this together. Because you've wasted enough time. You've wasted enough time. You need the validation that you know um, you deserve. And that none of your friends can give you right now because these friends pretty much don't respect what's going on. They, 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 it makes no sense to them why you're fighting or competing with someone else. God forbid, if, if you're competing with, if, if your narcissistic partner is married and you're competing with the husband or the wife, oh my God, when you get out of this, trust me, when you get out and you start coming out of this on the other side, you're going to realize how that shit made no sense and how it, it was so bad, it was so toxic. And you're going to be so happy and so grateful that you got out. Don't worry about what they're doing. Let them go terrorize the other person. Be glad that you're free. Okay? And if you haven't gotten no contact yet, and you're still competing, you're still caught up in this triangle, why don't you download the free ebook that I wrote titled The Five Steps of Going No Contact with a Psychopath Narcissist so that you can learn how to start building the boundaries that you need in order to keep these predators out of your life. You can't continue having conversations. You can't continue having a relationship with someone that's thinking about someone else, with someone that has an emotional connection with someone else, with someone that keeps devaluing you and comparing you to this other person. You deserve better. You deserve better. That's all I have for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Give it a like so that YouTube can continue showing um, these videos to more survivors of narcissistic abuse and we can continue growing the community. I appreciate all support and all the love this community has got to show. Um, there's people that have been following us for quite some time now and they continue updating us on their progress and sharing their wisdom as they come out of the situation on the other side. So definitely keep uh, leaving your stories below. If you have any questions that you'd like me to cover, um, you can always post a comment below or email me at info at psychopathexposure.com. Again, if you like some private one-on-one -on -one mentoring coaching, I have a link below in the description. Just send me an email or click on that for more information. 
and we can quickly set something up together. Hope you're having an awesome day and do not let these toxic people triangulate you anymore. Grab a hold of your dignity, wherever the hell it is, and pick yourself back up and start moving forward in the direction that you want your life to go. Don't let these toxic, low vibration energy predators keep you down anymore. Thanks again for watching. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.